This is Road to the Golden Door, where we unpack the proven success formula straight from the minds of Golden Door winners, uncovering the motivation, methods, and the mindset it takes to become an elite performer in door-to-door -door sales and in life. This is Road to the Golden Door. Now, here's your host, Mikey Lucas. What's up, guys? Welcome to the show. I've got a good buddy of mine, Dallin Pancarry, here on the show today. Super excited to be able to interview him. Uh, bro, thank you for coming on. Uh, thanks for having me, Mikey. Good to be here. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So um, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know that uh, we, we met at Door Door Conference in uh, Door Door Con in 2019, I think is what it was. I think I mm -hmm. saw you there again the next year. Um, I know you've been selling solar. For, you're an OG uh, in the industry. You've been selling solar for I mean, almost going on 10 years now. It's like six or seven years now, you said. So um, you've worked in California. You're now living in, uh, in, uh, in Idaho, in the greater Boise area, I'm pretty sure. Um, you've got a, a great team out there. You guys are just slaying it. So tell me a little bit, tell, tell our listeners a little, little bit about Dallin. And, you know, I know that you're married like that. So explain to them who you are and, and, and how you hit your golden door. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm born and raised Idahoan. Uh, I've been... I grew up here in Idaho. I've, I've uh, was never introduced to the door to door space. Um, growing up, I always had always heard people doing door to door, but I never really thought it was something for me. I had um, I just worked on farms essentially growing up, and I manual labor was was the the only way I thought I would be able to make money type type person. Um, I, I went and served a mission and then when I came back, I spent all my money to, to go on a mission. So when I came back, I, I had a friend going down to Southern California to go sell solar. And um, the way he explained it to me, it sounded like such a no brainer. So I thought, hey, yeah, let's try, let's try this out. I didn't see myself as a salesman at all. Um, I, I was really scared of sales, honestly. I couldn't, I grew up in a pretty uh, humble home as far as how money was uh, distributed. It was definitely, we were penny pinchers. We didn't have much. And so I, it was really hard for me to think I would go to someone's house and have them pay for something if they weren't planning on it. And that would just that would be something hard for me to do. So I never even thought it would be something I, I could do. But when, when I heard about solar and how it works, I was like, oh, like, yeah, I could, I could see myself doing that. And so I went down to Southern California and, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of great things happened. My mindset changed completely. Like I, I feel, I truly feel like I'm a, a different person. There's few things that, that change people's lives where they come out a different person, like serving a mission was one, getting yeah. married is another. Um, and then, uh, door to door was that, that was one of them. I, my mindset changed on money. My mindset changed on on what I'm worth hourly, like what, I, what I'm worth of producing compared to someone paying me an hourly wage on to paying me on what I can produce like that. Those, all those thoughts were, were just something that I, I've never really comprehended before. Um, but yeah, so I, um, being in California, I've loved it. Uh, it was, it was a great time. I met my wife, I was down there. So it was another great blessing in California. And then that now being in Idaho, I took the step of doing my own dealer. And so it's been, it's been a, another big learning curve, a lot of doubts, a lot of nights laying in bed being like, man, I don't know if I can do this. Um, but it's definitely been, been a, a, an experience that I wouldn't really trade. You know, I, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm doing it. Um, and then as far as, uh, as far as how I've, how my life has changed with door to door, it's, it's been something that I could, I could, I wish I could give more back because it's given me so much. And so being able to, to help people see how door to door can change their lives. I've been able to help a bunch of people over the years on, on, you know, similar, if I meet someone that was like me, it's really easy for me to connect with them. And it's easy for me to, to show them like, hey, dude, there's another way. There's another way. 
you don't have to be at an eight to five to provide for your family, even though that is a good way to provide for you. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but there are other ways. And I love introducing people to that. And then, and sometimes it works out for them, you know, and, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but when it does work out with them, for them, I just, I, I love being able to give back as much as I can um, because it's given me seriously everything. I can't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know where I would be today if I didn't get introduced to door to door, you know, eight years ago. I love that, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with you on that. It's a, uh, it's one of the reasons why I started the podcast here was because, I mean, I guess you could say the main reason um, is to give back. You know, I, I don't, I don't, we don't have to film these. We don't have to spend an hour to get some guys to come on and listen and and encourage them and motivate them and hopefully, you know, get them away from the get them away from the edge and, you know, encourage them to to go out there and work harder and be, you know, be the one for their family. And you know, we we don't have to do this, but again, this is, this is a way that you are giving back and the same thing for myself as well, living that for purpose lifestyle. So that's exciting. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. I do want to touch on that um, really quickly on that. I got a call yesterday from a buddy that I went to high school with top performer in sports, uh, went to play professional. Um, I'm not going to say the sport so that he doesn't think I'm talking about him, but um, I'm not talking crap, but just in general, <laughs> I don't think I'm talking about him, but uh, play, went, out, went, went to play for, for, for professional sports, <clears throat> ended up getting hurt kind of the whole nine yards and uh, the traditional story of, of, of our high school friends. And, uh, you know, he called me, he's like, you know, Mikey, how you doing, man? I'm like, great. You know, how are you? And uh, he was like, you know, how, how's the solar thing going? You know, I was like, uh, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> you know, I've got, you know, and then I started kind of like, you know, and I'm like, like, I don't know what to tell people anymore. Like mm-hmm. you, you came on, you tried, you tried working for with us for two, three, four weeks. It didn't work out because I don't know. It was too hard. You want anything handed to you? I'm like, so I do want to get into like your mindset on, on, I always talk about how door to door is got to be treated like a sport. I treated door to door just like a sport. If, if you come into door to door, and you think, hey, look, this is just going to be easy, uh, dude. Like, I don't know who's selling them a big a, a bill of goods, but like, you know, they're they're selling them a bag a bag of hot steam. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, a, a, a bucket a bucket of air over here. Like, this is this is a very complicated, hard, challenging um, industry to be in. But if you just applied yourself like you have done to be able to get yourself a golden door award, and now you're you're running your own dealer, like if you just did that it would be so fulfilling. You're like, dude, I don't know what I got to get back in one way. I'm in the same position. I'm like, how do we, how, so like start a podcast, start interviewing mm-hmm. only golden door award winners, because I want to show people that people like you down, you know, are, are, are normal, are normal guys out there. Just, you know, small town boy, you know, working on the farm, able to go out and, and hit and hit and be the elite in the industry. And you have made a career out of this and you're only getting started. Right. You guys are only getting started. You move back to your hometown. But, you know, t- tell me a little bit about about the mindset. So when 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 people ask you like, yo, down, you know, like you've got these awards, you've got this company now, you know, like, how's it? Is it is it OK? Is it good? Like, what do you say to the tiptoer when they're trying to get into solar? Yeah, yeah, that's that's I, that's a good question. So one thing that I that I've had to essentially overcome because even now, even now when I tell people when I came back home, because in California, I didn't, I wasn't surrounded by family, but now that I'm, I'm back and I'm surrounded by family, a lot of people ask me like, Oh, you know, how's solar doing? And then I'll tell them they're like, Oh, okay. But you're, you're not knocking doors anymore. Right. Like they'll ask me that every time, like, Oh, so you have your own company. So you, you, you don't have to knock doors now. And my, in my head, I think I've, as far as my mindset, I like, I don't know if there's shame that happens of people knocking doors. Like a lot of times people will be like, Oh, that's not a real job. That's, you know, that's maybe that's something you do for a little bit, but it's just to give you a jump start into something. But my mindset is even, even being running my own dealer is uh, I'm there to help people. Like, And that's why I love about solar is I truly believe in the product. I I'm not, and, and all the products that are door to door that people sell door to door, I know they're all great products um, and they help a lot of people, but there's something about solar 
that I am just fascinated with of uh, just someone having their own power plant. Like if you went back in time or, or just in, in general, there's been bunch of, a bunch of wars that have happened over power that have happened over um, natural resources. Like there's so many conflicts that have been happening just from people getting their electricity or just from people getting a resource. And I love the fact that I can help people create their own commodity with their own power plant. And so what, what got me so invested into selling the product was I got, I, I just sold myself on solar. I, it's, there's no better thing that I could help someone with in my head. And so to be able to, I become, I think to become a high achiever you need to have good work ethic and everything, but you, and I, this is, I don't know, everyone says this type of thing, but you truly have to believe in your product. You have to be, be someone that's sold, you know, like you have to have it on your own house. Like if you do have a house, you have to make sure that you're, if you're going to be selling it, that you have it as well. And, um, and so the, the, my mindset has always, has always been to help people, you know, and it's not nearly as if, if I go out into my area and I say, all right, I'm going to help 10 people this week, go solar. Like, that's what I'm going to do. And, um, that's, I'm not going to stop at anything until I do that type, type mentality. And so that, that's one of the things is I've, I've just really believed in the product my other mindset would be, and, and I've heard you mention this multiple times on some videos, and this is going back to my, my roots, as far as like, I was provide my family provided me, I had a great childhood. Like I loved my childhood. So money doesn't really dictate on whether you have a good childhood or not, but I do want to be, or not necessarily I want to be, but I, I feel like someone in our family has to be the one, like has to be the person that that sort of gets them out of the, the traditional mindset of, of like what's possible. Um, Cause I grew up in thinking, Oh, I'll never be rich. Like I'll never have money. Like that's, that's, you have to be lucky. You have to be born into it. You have to have a certain skill set to get into it. You have to have all. And so my other mindset is becoming the one like who, uh, when people ask if you're going to become a millionaire, like, or if you want to be a millionaire, it's like, yeah, I want to be a millionaire for the money, but it's more, I want to be the person who is a millionaire. Like I want to have those attributes that a millionaire has, not necessarily the money. Like, of course the money's nice, but the attributes is what gets you the money. It's not the reverse. You don't, you don't yeah. get the money. And then all of a sudden you get the attributes of a millionaire. And so my other mindset is developing those attributes is developing and surrounding myself with people that that have a lot of money in the sense that I've worked hard to get that money and seeing what they're doing, seeing um, um, what type of uh, uh, like sacrifices they make, what they're developing, because I know if I become that person, then the money follows like the, And so so that's another mindset is really improving myself, making myself as best as I can be. And then uh, the mindset of just wanting to help people. And I feel like if you have those two combos, it's, it's, a, it's dangerous. You can, you can achieve a lot if you have um, that, those two mindsets set in. Yeah, totally agree with you on that. It's, uh, <clears throat> I mean, what I hear you say there is that you're, if, if you're not, if you're not, if, you're, if your perspective is not helping and serving your client, helping and serving your community, which is why you went back home to do that. It's going to be very hard to become the millionaire. It's going to be very hard to be the one for your family that can pay for the treatments or the windfall, whatever, you know, payment for a car that, you know, it's just like, and I'm sure you've already done that. And it's kind of funny how, what well, now you, now you have some money. Now your now your family and friends come out of the woodworks, but, uh, and, and I, 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 uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to invite them to do that, but you know, I was like, Oh, that'll, that'll, they'll never, I saw that growing up too. I'm like, Oh, like they're going to uncle, you know, uncle Ted's house to get, to get money or whatever. And it's like, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll never be able to do that. I, I didn't think that either. I, I also was like, I'll just kind of work my regular job thinking normal. And again, like you said, I'm not against a regular job. Like 
honestly, there's times where I'm like, when I retire, I might just go get a job at a regular place just to mm-hmm. feel like it, like what it is again, just to be like, wow, uh, <laughs> I got a clock. Yeah. I'm a boss. I, I got a boss. Right. Um, and that's pretty awesome. I, I love that. You said that you're, uh, like the first sale is yourself. And, and I agree with you on that, but I think your why behind that is, is wars. And uh, I'm not sure if you've seen my stuff on door university or not, but I talk about that. Um, oh, that's like cool. a really big, that's a really big thing for me as well in my sales um, is, is like, look, do you realize that like we, we almost were in world war three in 20, I think 18 when uh, the, then when I ran uh, shot down one of our drones, like, do you guys realize that that was, a, that was a thing? Like, and do you, do you know where, where, you know, ISIS, they call it Daesh over there and in, in, uh, it's ISIS here in America, but Daesh over there took over um, land where the oil pipelines are at because, and they took over a whole refinery. Now America came and got it, but like back, but they took over a refinery, bro. Why? Because they want the energy. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about like, you're right. You're so right. I love that you have a purpose behind not just going and being a millionaire, but making the world a better place, making not just Idaho but um, the West coast, but all of America, central South America, uh, North America, a better place, the world, a better place to live in. And, uh, I think that dude, that's just, that's one of the reasons why, or one of the attributes that I have seen in golden door award winners is that they have more than just doing it for money. Like you can have all the money in the world. Like you're actually trying, you're actually trying to make the world a better place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And certainly. Yeah, I know. I've, I've noticed that too. The I was really lucky with the company I was work, working with from the beginning. They were, they were, they they instilled that into me, and I was able to learn from them a lot of it. Well, pretty much, every, I'm just a, an accumulation of experiences of other people that I've taken upon yeah. myself. And uh, yeah, I, I agree with you there. I agree with you. Interesting. Well, cool, dude. Tell me. Uh, let's let's kind of let's kind of. Uh shift a little bit so i know that you mm-hmm. your upbringing <clears throat> your upbringing was a humble upbringing uh you know you, you worked you worked in the, in the in the in the farms you know manual labor you served a mission which awesome dude mm-hmm. um you know i know that you invested in in the real estate and the airbnb right now um mm-hmm. what was that something that you thought you could do because a lot of guys right now especially being like middle of the year they're looking for tax mitigation strategies like i've got a whole company that does that that, that's like what they're looking for right now. So what, what was it about Airbnbs and, you know, real estate that, I mean, obviously Boise is blowing up. There's, that's one of the high, like top 10 or top five um, um, cities that have the greater Bo- Boise area that has the most cement being shipped into Boise right now. So I know they're, they're up there. I think they're even within the top seven, um, if not the top four. I, I don't know how to look now. <laughs> I'll yeah. put it in the show notes, but they're, they're it's up, up there. there. Yeah. So tell me, tell me a little bit about why you did Airbnbs and what was that like a, did you have a plan for that? Was it just kind of one-off? Like, did you have to save money? Tell me about the process on that. Yeah. So I, um, being in California, my wife and I, we would always, I will, I, I will impress that. I, I knew just, and this goes back to like surrounding yourself with people that have done really well is everyone that I've been around that, that had like what I would call like generational wealth, people that that either came from that type of money or they've started it themselves real estate was always part of their portfolio like it was always one of the number one things that they had and so i knew that was something i wanted to get into but once again coming from my my background that was something that was not a possibility like you you buy your own home and then you stick with your house that was like the the type of mindset I, I had originally, but being in California, my wife and I, we would always go up to a place outside of San Diego. It's called Julian and it's up in the mountains and it's, it's about like 45 minutes outside of San Diego, but it doesn't feel like you're in California more because there's pine trees. And yeah. it honestly reminded me a lot of Idaho when I would go up there. And so we, every year we would go up like once or twice and we'd get an Airbnb and they're, you know, 200, 300 bucks a night. And then the the last time we went up there, I finally was like, why am I, we need to just get our own Airbnb because it's, it's such a nice spot right side of, outside of San Diego and it's always packed. And so that's what got us interested in looking. And actually one of my friends that I did door to door with, he's now a realtor. And, and so I hit him up and told him what I was looking into. 
And I will tell you, it was the scariest thing I had done in my life up until that point because of the uncertainties of, wow. you know, is it going to work? Is, am I going to be able to manage this? Um, you know, what, like, I, I see myself as someone that takes care of other people, Airbnbs, but you always hear the nightmares of your Airbnb get trashed, you know, and, and, and is it worth the headache and, and all that stuff. And so when I was going through, so I, we found the place, um, I put in an offer and all that time I was feeling okay. And then once they accepted it, reality set in and I'm like, oh gosh, okay. I actually have to make this work. And so, um, yeah, once, once we got it up and running, like I, the very first day I put it on the Airbnb, we had like, like I woke up the next night and there was like six to seven bookings already just over the night time. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I feel a little bit better now, but the, the time of, of, you know, the two and a half months of going through ESCO, I was, I was like losing hair. And it was just because I had never like, you know, it's not, it wasn't, it's not like it was, it was like half a million bucks, but in my head, I was like, that's just insane. Cause it was the first time I think I had, cause I had saved up money just from doing door to door. I'd, you know, I had a portfolio in stocks and crypto and, and stuff like that, but nothing, nothing concrete yet. Nothing that was, that was, an actual house um, at, up until that point. Um, yeah. And so once it actually went through and things started clicking right, I was like, oh, okay, this is awesome. This is actually, this is something I can do. And then um, the next year I got another Airbnb. And so it was, and I, what was funny is the other Airbnb, even though it was, it was more than the first one, it, I, my stress level was, almost zero because I had already hit that threshold of, of stress. And so once I knew I could overcome that type of stress, the next time I, I experienced it, it wasn't nearly as bad. And, uh, and it's been going really good as well. And I know there's going to, I'm going to fall into a deal eventually that's not going to work out. I'm prepared for that. Um, but yeah. it, it, it was a funny experience because of that. Like I, like once you experience something that's really stressful, then it doesn't affect you nearly as much the next few times. And I've learned that in other things. Um, so I took that, what I've learned from that and put it in other parts of, of my life where you're, I'm always trying to reach a new level of stress almost or a new level of uncomfortability because once I can get comfortable there, there then that's like my new baseline. Then life is, I can get to that point and life is still good. And so once I get comfortable there, then I'm going to try to reach for another form of uncomfortability. Now, whether that's physical, mental, um, uh, economical, um, you know, any of those situations and always trying to push the boundaries because then I've noticed that's where, that's where the growth is. That's where I'm able to come out of an experience and be like, whoa, okay, that, that was amazing what I just experienced. Let's go find some more. Wow. Um, <laughs> that is awesome, dude. And and how does how did I mean how did door to door how did door to door play into that? Was there any negotiating or any, you know, did you did you have any of the same butterfly feelings? Are they are they the similar same butterfly feelings you're talking about there? Yeah, yeah. It's very similar. Like even even to this day, if I go out to an area, my first door, I'm always feeling a little nervous. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but it's always the first door. It's like, okay, let's, let's get first what was that? You're the only person that feels like that. I can't believe you. Yeah. Did that. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but no, but as far as negotiating, yeah, there, I did do a little bit of negotiating, which I loved. Yeah. The skills of door to door really helped on, on being comfortable and cool as a cucumber when you are negotiating. So this person that was selling it to me, he, he was, he was running it as an Airbnb. And so it was all set up for an Airbnb. And, um, inside the the plan he was going to be taking the the stuff back the all the the couches the tvs the beds and all that stuff and i was taught he was an older guy he's like 65 70 and he was going to have to hire some people to come and do it and so i i i knew where his wife worked inside julian and so we went and i went and talked to her about it and i was like you don't want to have you guys don't want to have to spend money to get that stuff moved out. Cause then you're going to have a plate. You're going to have to like store it somewhere probably get a storage unit. Who knows? I asked like, do you have any plans with it yet? And she's like, no, we don't have any plans. 
I'm like, yeah, you're gonna have to have the storage unit. It's probably gonna sit there for a year or two. It's it's not gonna be nearly as as good as as it is now when it's sitting in the in the unit. Then you guys are gonna have to move it again. You're gonna have to pay people to do that each time. So, like, why don't we? And this the the amount of stuff in there was well over 15 grand because there's like TVs in every room and and stuff. And I was like, why don't we just? I'll pay you an extra three grand, and then you guys can just leave everything. And then. She, she went and talked to her husband and then, yeah, luckily it worked out. So I was able to get all that stuff. And then I didn't have to, it was pretty much a turnkey, a turnkey uh, Airbnb then. So that, that was really nice. <laughs> That's so <laughs> I dope. That. I love that. And so you're doing that remotely. Yeah. Yeah. So now we have uh, uh, some people taking care of both of our Airbnbs. But, um, we just check in with them and um, you know, pay them. Venmo's awesome. You know, there's a lot, there's so many technologies that make it really easy to be able to do it from. Remote. Yeah, absolutely. I just, yesterday I just had uh, a leak in one of the, one of the places, but luckily was able to get it put in. That's another thing you know, you have when things go wrong, like what do you do? And I think door to door has helped me a lot with that because how many of us have had a customer call and be like, the roof's leaking or, or customers be like the people, they put the panels in the wrong spot. And you can either, you can either like make that frazzle you or let it frazzle you, I should say. And, and then try to be really frantic. Um, but either way, the, the problem needs to have a solution. And I've noticed when I'm frantic mode, the solutions are really poor, um, usually very emotional based. And so with Airbnb, when we have problems, which there's always problems, I feel like I'm I'm able to keep my cool a lot better and able to come with a solution and be a little bit more exact, you know, make a few phone calls and know that I can't control everything in the situation, but I can control what I do and making sure that my choices are precise and um, are able to have a, that, that provide a solution type thing. And, and door to door has helped me do that to be able to calm customers down help them understand that, okay, yeah, this is a hiccup. We're going to get it fixed. I'm going to make sure that you're happy by the end of this. Like I'll tell people all the time, I'm like, by the end of this thing, getting solution, I'm going to make sure that you're happy. You won't, you won't be happy that it happened, but you're going to be happy how it was resolved. I'm going to take care of you. And having that, okay. that confidence to tell your customers that, because I know just being in the industry a long time, there's a lot of people that will sell a customer and then they'll ghost them. Like if something happens, they're calling them. They're like, oh, I'm not going to deal with that customer. I already got paid for it type, type mentality. You know, it's like, I already got paid for it. I'm not going to deal with them. With me, it's, it's, I like, I feel for the customers I help. And so I, I have a lot of empathy for them. So it's hard for me to leave them on the wayside type thing. And so I've had to deal with a lot of those types of situations and it's translated and it's translated into marriage too. Like there's times things get crazy. Um, you know, emotions are high and being able to, you know, de-escalate situations, de-escalate it. Don't, don't rub up situations, de-escalate them. And, um, and it, it, I feel like it can translate into almost any aspect of your life, being able to do that. I mean, what's, what's the opposite of that, right? Like the opposite of that is what, like, you know, freak out and, es and, and I mean, I guess, yeah, and escalate escal everything, fuel right? the so fire. Yeah. Like how, yeah. how's that going for you? How's your road rage going for you? Right. Like you hear, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. My wife every once in a while will bring home like a, somebody got shot again in Timbuktu, Minnesota or whatever. And I'm like, from a road rage, I'm like, all right, like, you know, I get it. But like, yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think that's one of the, one of the coolest parts about what door to door has done for you now going into now your real estate career as well is been able to help you stay cool, calm and collected um, under, under pressure. And uh, only you can only do that if, and I'm not saying only, but you didn't learn that in college, did you? No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Learn that, learn That's that. real life experiences. Real life experiences. I absolutely love that. So tell me a little bit about um, when the year you hit your golden door was 2019. Um, mm -hmm. Have you have you gotten close to that again? I know that you've transitioned into owning a company, which is a which you, there should be a golden door. There should just be a, 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 a club for us that, you know, the guys that own, uh, you know, yeah. a, wound looking, a wound looking hurt club for all of us that owned a freaking uh dealers that uh you know all these reps you know um but mm -hmm. tell me tell me a little about like your 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 process your mindset when in the year that you hit the golden door um did you know about what a golden door was was that like the goal did you have people around you tell me a little about that year go go back to go back to the to the golden door years 
Yeah, yeah. So the the year I hit the Golden Door was, uh, you know, 2019, and it was I had I didn't know too much about it. It was more my friend that I was working with, Taylor Armstrong, which I, I don't know if you know Taylor. He does yeah, the yeah. Solopreneur podcast. Oh yeah, and um, he he told me more about it. He's like, hey, we we should like try to hit this and I was like okay yeah and we, we started off the year really good and so it was it was actually doable I you know if he would have told me in the beginning of the summer and I hadn't really closed anything yet it probably would have been a little bit more of a daunting task but we started off really good and he told me you know that that it's a you know award for those that that can a little bit on the higher end on on the performers and so, yeah, I, we buckled down. Um, we, we became sort of like accountability partners, um, making sure we were both out there and both working hard to be able to get it. Um, my whole, my method was, was relatively like it was, it was nothing extravagant, but it was military. It was, it was every day going to the correlation, um, every day, from correlation don't skip a beat don't do anything else other than getting out to the doors and i would try to make sure we had at least three appointments a day to go to like that was sort of the key is always making sure your pipeline was filled with three appointments for the next day and so that was that was a big um, part we would try not to i would try not to stop until i had that um, for the next day and then um as far as like the formula, it's if there's really nothing that can be just putting in the time, there's no, there, I wish there was like a magic pill of, uh, or a magic um, thing you could do to be able to produce a lot, but it's, it's really just how much time you're on the doors and how much time you're in a deal. Because if I, I feel like the more deals I was in, the more I could become like a, a sales future teller in a way is like, yeah, I, you've probably been in this situation. Once you've been in so many deals, you can almost feel and guess what the customers are going to say <laughs> before they even come up with them. Like you can see their facial reactions. Like if I say this and they react this way, that means I need to say this, or if they react <laughs> a different way, I need to say this. Like I just had it just because I was in so many appointments, it was really. And so that, I got on a rhythm of knowing exa exactly how to close each person, each personality type, whether they were a, a shark or if they were a dolphin, you know, I got, I really got into personality types, knowing how to sell those people, you know, sea urchin, those types of things. Those are the labels I have. I know everyone has different labels on how to do personality traits, but there's a million books out there on it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's so many, so many things. I stick to water animals. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I just got, I got really dedicated on the, on closing and, and I think the repetition of putting myself in those deals and being in so many deals, it helped to get the golden door. Cause one thing that's different between solar and a lot of the other golden doors is most like I, I did, I did same days a lot, like a lot of same day appointments, but most are two touch close, you know, you're on the door set up an appointment for the next day compared to like alarms and pests usually it's one and done you're done and you're on to the next door and so I, I it does take a little bit more time to get those deals closed up than a traditional door-to-door -door, um, type of uh, sale and so being in those those situations a lot helped me develop a, a weird I don't know future telling skill I, I, I can't even describe it really it's sort of hard to a weird phenomenon and, uh, and so, yeah, just putting myself out there. That was the, that was the big thing. I wasn't, my wife, especially 2019, barely saw me. Like it was, I was getting home, you know, leaving around 10, 30, 11, and then getting home 9, 30, 10, pretty much every day. It was, it was a long, it was a long time. And so, yeah, it was, it was just putting in the work. Like there's, there's really no other, other way to do it. Just put in the work and you'll find that uh, the work becomes a little bit easier. You'll be more productive with the work because you're you're building your skill set each time. You're just sharpening that saw every time you go out and become sharper and sharper. So let me talk about that really quick. Um, one, thank you for sharing that. Um, and I, I would, it'd be interesting to understand um, kind of where where your heart was at when it came to 
but your, where your heart was at when it came to like, you know, and, 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 your, and in your relationship with your wife, because I've got a lot of guys that are, that are golden door award winners that I've already interviewed now that are, that are married. And then there is guys that are not married. So, and I just got married, as you know, um, mm-hmm. here in 2022, we got, just got married, my wife and I, Ryan, um, you know, to like, I had, I had a, an a inter- interview with, with Ashton Buswell. And I, I love asking this question when I get into masterminds and to high level people, because like for us, if, if we lost everything and everything was taken away from us, we could just go knock on doors again. Like if our company, if the, if for instance, like we lived in some communist country, I'll leave that there. If we live in the communist country and the, and the government took our company, Mm-hmm. The government took our house, the government took our cars, the government took everything. And we mm-hmm. could go back to, let's just say, California <laughs> or, <laughs> and wherever else. Oh, I'm getting political. Um, uh, you know, we, we could just start, if we, if we lost, we, you and I could, we could just go knock on doors and just start selling solar again. Like if all of our guys were taken from us, we could just go do that again. So I don't really like asking guys like, like we know how to make money now, but mm-hmm. like you understand emotional intelligence, sales and uh, sales psychology um, to be able to understand if, if, if this person, for instance, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm, I'm sure you're going to have a picture of somebody in your head. The wife, the wife, the, 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 the dad is more soft-spoken, more like, you know, ha- uh, hands, at, ha- hands and knees, scrub, scrubbing toilets kind of guy, likes to get in his attic, loves working on his roof, very chill, you know, not, not a biker, skinny guy. And then the wife, very hard full full uh full, full court press like we ain't signing anything today and you end up getting a sale but like like you have the ability you understand what those people look like and just just that 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 attribute alone is you can't buy that so that being said it's just it's just it's an interesting thing i i don't like to ask people that are that are hyper successful billionaires and and, and hectamillionaires Hey, how do you, how do I go make more money? I don't have a problem with making money. Um, I, I want to know how do I, how do I have a, what, what is known, which I don't talk with this at all. I just had an interview with uh, David Meltzer yesterday and I learned this in 2019 at Thrive from him. And he was talking about how, you know, you don't have a balanced lifestyle. You can't have a balanced life. You can't have 50% work, 50% your kids. 50% your wife or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever, right. You can't like, you can't like 33, 33, 33, those things. Like it's just not going to work. If you do 33%, let's just, if it was a three, 33%, your wife, 33%, your kids, 33% your, your job, you'd be broke. Mm-hmm. Like in door, you'd be broke. You can't spend 33% of your time with your, with your wife and your kids and you only go th- spend the same time. In, in, like it's, it's too much. It's not even what your kids want. It's overpowering. So I love asking hyper successful men, that are like, hey, I, I, I'm like, hey, man, you've been married. You guys have been married now for, for what, six years? Mm-hmm. You and Taylor? So like, yeah. what, what? tell me, how, how, how did you convince her? I know that we're going to sales, but like, how did you sell your wife? But like, how did you sell your wife on like, hey, baby, like, you know, this is the vision. Did you cast a vision? Like, was she on board at first? I mean, my wife, my wife, bless her soul, dude. Like, she's just been on board and just about it but as the fire gets hotter as we get closer to the fire i mean it's like it kind of freaks her out a little bit and i'm like like you know, welcome so, to my so, life <laughs> yeah yeah I'm like, baby like this was very clear on like our first two dates when we first started dating and i was like this is where i'm going but like you know maybe, maybe i don't know maybe she's seen that on movies where it's like you know guys like say they're going in to do big things and i'm like no, like I'm actually going to do big things. So tell me a little bit about how, how did you convince Taylor to, it's funny, that's my, my wife's middle name. She uses Taylor at, uh, at Starbucks all the time because Ryan oh. is like, so yeah, she uses yeah, yeah. but tell me a little bit about that. Like, like I, I, I love getting in that conversation around how you're doing better. And again, this is where the like vulnerability part comes in, but like, mm-hmm. how, like did you have to like, do you have to continue to like quote unquote sell Taylor on like, Hey babe, this is like, you know, we're moving back to, uh, to Idaho and moving back home. And like, just tell me about that. I hope that gave you enough information and direction of where I want you to go with this, but tell me yeah, about that. Yeah. Yeah. So the, um, I started dating Taylor when we were, when I was down there doing door to door. So she, she understood, but it was when I was just a rep, you know, I wasn't managing a team at all. So it was, it was when you're just a rep, you have a little bit more leeway on what you're able to do as far as you pretty much just have to show up to correlation, go out and knock and you're good. 
type thing. Um, and so she, she was aware of my schedule, but we did when, once we got married, I did, we did have a little sit down and, and sort of, we had to plan out our future on what we wanted. And so she really wanted at the very beginning, she's like, well, I want a house to, to stay at, you know, that's what everyone wants. Yeah. which I, I was like, yeah, I, I totally understand, you know, and <laughs> you're, you are, you are right. I, I like, can't use my sales tactics as much. I like I can't, I've done totally so many, so many feel felt bounds with her that she's like, she'll, she'll call my bullshit. She'll be like, no, you can't use that. You can't use that. <laughs> um, and so we did, I, I pretty much would, the way I did it is I played out scenarios. I'm like, what type of scenario do you want? We can get a house right now and then be sort of tied to that house, which is going to be good. We, we'd have to put in, you know, Southern California, pretty expensive market for homes. And so we'd have to put a huge chunk of money down. So all that money we wouldn't really be able to use. Um, or we can be using it. And this is more on the money side as we, or we can be using that money to help us make more money. So then that way we don't have to work for our house. That way, I, I, my daily job or my job doesn't pay for the house, but what we have invested will pay for the house. Yeah. But the way to do that is that I'm going to have to be putting in a lot of time. And so I, from the very beginning, we did have to establish it. Like you were saying, Mikey, like you, you say it, but then when it does come, push come to shove, when it does get to the point where I've you know been every week, I'm getting home at 10, 1030, and she's already in, in bed, they can cause stress, you know, in a marriage where you're, you know, I did, you only saw them for an hour, you know, you only saw them for an hour out of the day. And, uh, but what's helped me and this, there's a book called um, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And so what happened to me is I, every hour, so say if I got just one hour with my wife a day, I would make sure that hour there's no distractions. I was able to be with her, be able to enjoy the now. You know, we all get those text messages that we might have to respond to, but um, or emails. But I would make sure that whenever I was with her, I was with her. Because if you're out working all the time and then you come back and you're with her and you're still working, then it's gonna it's it, the the put strains on the marriage that are in my opinion, a lot of times unnecessary. Um, and those strains will just continue and continue to, to pull on the marriage. And so I'd make sure that my focus was on her when I was with her. But then when I wasn't with her, I would tell her, hey, you can't text me when I'm out, out in the doors because there's nothing worse than it being like 8.30, it's getting dark and you're like, oh, I still, still need to get one more. Then your wife texts you like, hey, are you coming home? like immediately your mind goes into like, oh yeah, it would be so nice to come home. It'd be so nice. So she knew she had her rules uh, to follow. Like she couldn't text me. I, I obviously there was emergency of course, but like she couldn't text me, couldn't contact me because that it's me personally. I do want to go home. It's not like I want to be out there. I do want to go home. I would be awesome to lay on the couch and, you know, just hang out with her and have food and, and all that stuff. But we would set parameters that would help us reach our success. And, and so I think that was the big thing for us is like planning it, see the vision on where we wanted to go, what we had to do to get there, and then set the, the rule book that we had to follow with each other. And so that was, that was a big, big thing. Another one, and I would do this all the time with her, would be I would set up like incentives between her and I where if I didn't do what I was supposed to, then I would get her something. She loves candles, like from Bath and Body Works. I don't know what it is, but she just loves candles. And so it would be like, hey, if I don't get um, three appointments today, then I'm, I'll buy you some candles. And so it like, if I didn't hit my goal that I wanted, I could at least give her something and then on the same side, sometimes I'll do the reverse. I'd be like, all right, for, for myself, like, hey, we'll get, we'll be able to go out on a date if I can, or go out to dinner if I can close, you know, four deals this week. And so um, 
that that would also push me. So we we would do like my work was almost intertwined with her because she knew with door to door, it's not like a normal job where you can leave leave your work at home. So she was like my partner in crime, trying to help me hit my goals as well. Like she, like whenever there would be company competitions of like a trip, she'd be like, "Hey, so how's it going?" She would help push me, and so I, I, it was a it was a nice it's a nice combo. But there's there's definitely times where women and men, I'm sure men too, but women just need the emotional time. They need the time of, of knowing that that you're thinking of them that you know you're you're there for them and so you you have to remember that as a man that they're not like us they are much more sensitive and they need those emotions and so making sure I, for me carving out time at least you know a little bit of time for for them and I, it's definitely helped us in 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 our marriage that's for sure Dude, thank you for sharing that that is uh so very encouraging um funny enough one of one of the one of the biggest or I guess one of like the most popular, I guess you could say, um, Instagram and TikToks that I've ever talked about was um, around relationships. So it, it's funny to see that our generation, like we, we, we love talking about, oh, yeah, the Bentley, the Rolls Royce, the freaking Tesla, I whatever <laughs> the cool this, the Bali trips. But at the end of the day, we like we we yearn we we uh we thirst for good quality relationships and uh um you know no offense to our parents generation but it wasn't it doesn't have to be your parents but the people your friends parents right whoever influenced you um in, in in your community you know they didn't really do a very good job for the majority of us showing us what a loving you know, thriving relationship look and healthy relationship look like a well, not balanced, but a harmonistic life about a family look like it was the dad was gone too long. And, you know, the mom ended up, you know, hanging on to the kids or whatever. Right. Like, in like, you know, then she would come home and be resentful or whatever. Like, I love that you said you, you have a, I love that you said you have an incentive based marriage um, that dude, I, I have, I'm a big incentive guy. I just finished a seven day cleanse and I've got all my coaching guys that I, I coach with. I, I actually coach a lot of golden door guys. And we've just, we just, uh, today is the, today is their last day, but I just ended, I did mine a day early and I said, screw it. Why am I, why am I not doing this with these guys? So they're on their last day. I just finished mine. I'm going to do mine again today, but, uh, on for my eighth day, I, I've, I've committed to it, but I haven't, I don't know. I mean, I'm in between. I might do it. I might not do it. I want to, I, I want to I wanna drink coffee, man. I got, I did this, I did, I did this cleanse and you know, we, we, I've done this in my offices. I've done this in the, in the 200 plus companies that I, that I've consulted in thousands of sales reps that I've consulted, not, not including on the internet, um, mm -hmm. like in person, live events like that. That is one of the biggest things I talked about is that people only do what they're incentivized to do. And it was really cool to hear you say that, you know, it's, it sounds weird, but like practically speaking, on, on the service level, oh yeah, I incentivize my wife. I'm gonna bring her some candles on the final hit three freaking appointments. It's like, are you serious? What do you what do you like? Is that how you have to have a good relationship? Like, well, tell me how your relationship's going, buddy. Like, you know, are, <laughs> is your relationship thriving? Like, get out of here, dude. Like, yeah, you know, it's just it's funny how people will. It, it, if you, I, I've talked to guys that have like lost hope that they that there is no good girl out there for them, or their wife hates them, or you know, they're they're you know they suck whatever i don't know and these guys just have like lost hope because like over the last really five or six years now when i've been searching for a wife um i would ask i would ask these questions like i just told you earlier i was like i would ask these questions to guys that were successful hey how do you have a life that you're you're a multi multi-millionaire you're influencing thousands and thousands of lives how do you have a relationship with your wife what are some of the things that you wish you would have done better or wish you would have cared less about or whatever. And one of those things that I, I heard them say was that they would incentivize in, in other words, they would incentivize their relationships. I think that's mm -hmm. freaking awesome that you're doing that. And I think you and Taylor, at least from what, I mean, everyone on social media looks like they're happy, but like from what <laughs> I can tell, like, bro, like you guys, you guys have a vision. You guys have a goal. Um, you guys have a, you know, you guys probably ha even have like a family motto, like where you guys are going, what you guys believe in. You guys have those core values probably written out. You know, you might have a tattooed on your, on your I don't know, whatever, you know, but you know, <laughs> you, uh, you, you have that. And um, 
I think that's worked out so much that it's not just in door to door sales where you got to incentivize your reps and your, and your people to work, but, or your installers to work correctly. Like, you know, for instance, just, just as an example, if the comp, if the install company is not in, incentivizing their installers to pass inspection on the first time by some sort of a monetary bonus of like, Hey, you hit 10 f- for, uh, 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 you know, first inspection passes, you get a hundred dollar pair of shoes, new shoes for the crew. Like, why aren't we doing that more? Cause then mm-hmm. that makes all of our then sales uh, organizations happier because then our customers are happier. It's like, why aren't we incentivizing this stuff to do? And now I would bring that up to a lot of people and some companies will do that. Some won't, but mm-hmm. I think that's awesome that you're doing it in your marriage too. We do the same thing. Uh, I think it was so funny. Like I just like opened up and took a huge whiff of my, of my bathroom closet uh and like these stacks of candles in my bathroom <laughs> my wife goes you don't need to use febreze just if you you know using the bathroom open just open up, up the cap i'm like yeah i guess you're right huh so i think that's <laughs> awesome that you guys are doing that that's pretty awesome that's funny. That's funny. so then i know you said that you know you guys spend time one of the one of the cool things about and common character traits or attributes I've heard from Golden Door Award winners um, and top performers is when they're with their wife, they're there. Like they yeah. are present. You know, I know you guys don't have kids yet, but when you're when you guys have kids eventually or adopt, that like you guys will you will be a great father because you understand that that, that the greatest asset you have is your time. And if you are focused on doing door-to-door sales, or if you're, you'll be focused on being there with your wife, you'll be focused on there and being with your family, the be, being there with your kids, you know, with your, your your nieces and your nephews or whatever, like you're focused. And that's one of those things is that we are, we are a very distracted generation and it's, it, it, it hurts my heart, bro. It hurts my mm-hmm. soul that we get so distracted. And then we wonder why, you know, three, four years down the road, like I was telling you that kid earlier called me and I'm like, bro, it's. 2022 like we worked together in 2019 bro like that's like what three four years five years ago now almost like it felt like you know i was recruiting him back in the day and then he finally came on and like he lasted like three four five weeks or a month or two or whatever and like how solar going for you like don't act like you don't i don't see you on my stories bro i see <laughs> yeah. you watching you me bro like you know and i'm just trying to be as real as i possibly can like i don't put on a, a, a flex or a front like you know, if I'm excited, I'm excited. If I'm pissed off, I'm pissed off. If I'm like, you know, sad, I'm going to be sad, bro. Like I just try yeah. to be Mike Lucas and that's just who I am. Like my stage name is who I am. That's just, yeah. you know, it is. Yeah. So um, you, you are, you are authentic. I know when I first met you, when we were talking, I was like, dude, there's some, there's, there's an energy about Mikey. That's just a little bit, it's contagious. It's definitely a contagious uh, type of energy that you have. So I, I, you're, I feel like no matter how you are, you're going to be hundred percent on, on whatever you're feeling. Cause that just seems who you are. You're just authentic to how you're feeling. Yeah. And put, put me in, put me in with my wife. dude. I'm going to be there, bro. Like, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I don't, I, I, I tell my wife the same thing. Like you, you, you obviously tell Taylor the same thing for you as well. It's like, I'm not going to, and she will call me out on like sales tactics, you know? So it, it is, it's a transition, bro. Like you have to take off salesman mask and put on husband masks like i am here like you are you are i cherish this person like i love this person i i i i i I enjoy being with her right so how do you do that is by being present and i I don't know about you bro but i i uh a couple videos ago on my instagram and youtube i talked about um how i tracked 67 percent of my year last year and the last few years in a row like 58 percent 67 percent and I, I track how much time I'm spending with my wife. I track quality time, hanging out with her, on the phone with her, hanging out with the dogs, hanging out with family and friends with her, spiritual time with her, like pissed off at her, all of that. So wow. I, I, I track all of those things. Uh, I don't know uh, how to, how to turn did, this. You did a thumbs up and it like appeared on there. That was cool. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that worked. That's funny. Anyways, so I, tra- I track all those things because I care about it. And so it's like the, the whole mm. the old homage of like, you know, you can, you can, uh, what is, how does it go? Like you, I, I heard, literally heard it yesterday for the first time in a long time. I've said this multiple times, um, but it's like, you know, you can't, you can't manage something that you're not tracking. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how much time are you spending with your wife? If you can just gauge that like mentally, um, as a door, as a sales professional, like, Hey man, like my wife, there's something up here. Like you can get that. 
but I'm like, I'm like going to the extent where I'm like, I'm tracking everything, dude. Like I need to know, like, I, I want to see habits. I want to understand why she's this way, why she acts this way. If I'm not doing this and comparing that to my work life, because bro, like we, us, you know, solar professionals, sales professionals are a different animal, bro. Like we, we need to have a level of balance and harmony, harmony inside of our, inside of our lives so that one, we don't get distracted and two, mm -hmm. we hit the goals that we need because dude, you're, you're feeding, not just your, your team, but you're feeding your team's family. Like that is, that's a huge, that should be a huge burden on your back. And you should take that hundred percent serious. And I know that you do, which is why I respect mm -hmm. you. And that, that is a, that is a character trait that you care about people that are in your organization and their families and you see their families and their kids and their kids and their moms and dads and you work them up too. So it's a, it's cool that it's cool to see um, that you care, you care that much about your wife and that you it's you're on, on and off the field. You're, you're a, you're an all-star player. So that's just, it's a, I got to give you that honor, man. It's, it's an, it's an awesome thing to see on the internet. I appreciate that. The um, another thing, and, and this, and I'm not sure in your experience, Mikey, if you've seen this, but, and I just had a, a really life altering moment that happened yesterday is like we as door to door salesmen, there's a lot of, or just salesmen in general, probably, but the highs and lows we always have, you know, I do really good, not doing good. And there's an emotional impact that happens doing that. And I feel like making sure that you're feeding yourself as well, like obviously nutritional value, but also like in a, in a, and I'll say spiritual, and I don't want to say it in like a, a religious sense, sense, but we need to be feeding ourselves spiritually or emotionally as well, because it, it, this job does take a toll. It doesn't, it doesn't come with its own. It takes as much as it gives essentially. And so I had a, unfortunately, I had a buddy that he took his life last week and he's been doing door to door for four years now. And he's, he's been really successful and he'll, he'll make a bunch of money, but he had some addictions that would keep him from hitting his true potential. And I, and I, I don't want to say it was because of door to door because it, it wasn't door to door. He was struggling with, with a bunch of stuff, but there's definitely a balance that needs to happen with other parts of our lives to make sure that you're in it, that you're capable of maneuvering around these difficult parts of life. Because if door to door is taking everything out of you, then you're, it's going to be harder for you to give yourself like to your wife or to your friends or to your family, to your girlfriend. It's going to be harder for you because door to door is taking everything out. It's, it's, you know, it's emotionally, it's physically, it's all these mentally, it's all these things it's pulling out. And so I do think you have to have throwing in there, you know, some type of spiritual, some type of emotional uplifting you know, uh, books are really good and, and all that stuff, but you need to, you need to get down to a more, um, more intimate level with yourself, because if you don't, you, there's things that can happen that might start uh, escalating to worse and worse situations. And I've seen it. I, this is the first time I've ever had someone actually take their life that, that um, I've worked with. And, and be, I, man, it's, it's just crazy. Like my whole, when I heard it, I just, when I was told that, that he took his life, I had like a, a, a rush of memories knocking with them because we would always go out and knock together and how he would tell me about the struggles he was dealing with and I, and I wish I could have done more to, to help him it's one of those like those things where you just are like man I should have done more I should have done more type thing but I know in his life he wasn't doing that he would he would go he would work and you you know work a full day but he would go and he would drink you know or he would go and he'd do something else and what he was replenishing himself with wasn't something that actually gave him substance. It wasn't, it was a false sense of substance. And so if you're really focused on giving yourself to your family, to your friends and doing door to door, you have to take care of yourself too. You have to make sure you're doing stuff that will give you more, um, more of a purpose, you know, those, those types of things that so you're always taking care of your body. You're going to the, to, to do all these things. And I think, 
fit if you're doing that physically you also got to do it spiritually in some way in some way I, and everyone's a little bit different on what that way is but if you don't then you could be it's going to be harder and harder for you to to give yourself to others as well and to your customers 100 I, I am sorry for your loss brother that's uh that's definitely ne ne never easy never easy to go through um you know, I've, lost a lot of really close friends and it, even even in door door my first yeah my first summer somebody took his life somebody took his life he had a wife and a kid took his life in one of the company cars it was just like i was like bro what are we doing here like mm -hmm. i was like i was like i thought i thought i was getting out of the drug game thinking that we're i was gonna just go be a professional <laughs> like it's over here too um mm -hmm. But it just goes to show like, you know, leaders are leaders are readers, man. And, and you don't got to be a leader and, uh, you know, be a, a, a lead, you know, the president of the United States to be a leader like, bro, like you're a leader. You should lead yourself. You should lead your family. You should lead, you know, people in your community you, you lead. So um, I, I, I totally agree with you on that. I think the mental game, the spiritual game is is vitally important, um, which is that's the second uh, most watched video on my Instagram and YouTube was how does, how does success and spirituality, how do, how do they, how do they combine? Um, and I talk about that and I'm, I'm actually building out a series on that, that I'm just going to give away to people about like my spiritual journey as well. Cause I, I want people to know that. And they've, and, and again, that's, if that's what the crowd, if that's what the followers want to know, that's what they want to know. And, uh, mm -hmm. I think that that is definitely what's kept me grounded. Yeah. And def if, if that's, it shows that not to put this in the, in the, like a business sense, but if that's what, yeah, like you said, if that's what the market demands, then that means there's there's a lack in that market, right? So if they're if that's your second most watched video, then that means there's a, that hit a lot of people where they probably watched it, maybe they showed it to someone because they they themselves are in that situation. Like, man, I, I you know I made a lot of money last year, but somehow I feel less fulfilled. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of people like that. Like, yeah, I made more than I've ever made, but somehow. I'm, I'm like still sad and so there's you do there does need to be that type of balance so that's that's awesome that you're doing that yeah and again it's just a it's just a you know i would be i would be doing i'd be doing you know my god a disservice by not making his name famous and uh giving him the credit for where i'm at today because you know i was dude i was in the deepest darkest that anybody I've, almost anybody i've ever heard of um, you know, and it's funny cause like, I didn't have like a hard upbringing, you know, humble upbringing as well. Same thing. Like, you know, I just chose to be, I guess you could call it the black sheep, I guess, but you know, it was almost like a game, like how, how much worse can I be than my, my first brother and my second brother? And I was like, I don't know why I thought that way, but again, it came down to what I was feeling myself. And, I, and my parents did a great job, bro. Like hats off to them. My parents did a great job, but still, I just, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it was the culture, if it was the music I was listening to, but like, I definitely wasn't reading books on like how to go become successful, even though I wanted, I think I thought it would have been, would have been cool, but it was just came down to my identity, which is what, which is one of the hard parts about how do you have a, 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 a harmony, a harmonistic lifestyle, um, be a great sales professional, make a lot of money, serve your community and have what you want and have ultimate freedom. Um, you know, creating an inheritance for your children's children, which is what I, which is what part of my program does, um, is I help people create an inheritance for their children's children and, and get their money right. It's like, dude, we all, we all want it. We just, we act like we got it all together and we, we know we don't. So it's, it's funny to see that, uh, you know, yet another Golden Door Award winner is on top of his game and you're just, you're just living, I don't want to say living your best life, but dude, you're living a life that is just true. And it's honest with yourself and you have a great relationship with your wife, great relationship with your clients, great relationship with your company, with your installers. Um, and, and, it, and, it, and it seems as if to me, especially after interviewing today, that, you know, getting to know you more now that you you are somebody that I would want to I would seriously would go on vacation with my family. Like and that's a, that to me, that's a big thing for us growing up. Like if you'd go on vacation with the family in like the mountains with the RVs, that's a big deal, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, like, and I feel the same like <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. But um, a couple, a couple last things here. Trans mm -hmm. transition. Um, if, if there was, if there was, with with the listener that's that's selling fifty or sixty installs in a year, you know, wh what what would you tell them? You know, let's just say they're in Florida, they're in Texas, they're in wherever, they're in Chicago, they're in Maryland. 
you know, Nevada, whatever, right? Like, mm-hmm. what, how, how do they get to a golden door? How do they get to that 10.8 installs in a month, the, that 130 installs in a year? How do they get there? Yeah. And so what, and to give you a little bit of my very first summer, um, I sold 65 or I had 65 installs. That was my very first summer. And I did, it was all straight knocking and closing, you know, that was strictly all I didn't, I didn't get many referrals. I wasn't asking for referrals. I just was knocking essentially a lot of times I was like scared to go back to the customer because I was always afraid that like, what if they have a bad experience and I show up and they're pissed at me <laughs> like that, you know, that sort of comes through, came through my head. I was a young guy. didn't know much about sale. You know, I was still learning. And then what, what was something that made the jump for me was one, and I sort of alluded to this, is making sure I had three appointments every, every day for the next day. Like that was a big thing. Sometimes I wouldn't even, I wouldn't have to. So say if I had a really big day and they booked like six appointments, three for the next day, three for the next day, then I would know, okay, I don't, I, I, my appointments are set for the next day. So I could, I could make sure I, I did some, you know, something else on the days when I didn't need to go out and knock. So always making sure I had three appointments. So that was a, that was a big key. Don't stop until you have three appointments the next day. Um, and then the second thing, then this is where, when I got the golden door was I, I started going back and getting referrals. I would wait I would wait for them to get installed most of the time, unless they were really, really, really solid. Uh, Cause I didn't want them to go back to a friend and then start like price quote, you know, trying to get other quotes from another friend or something like that. But once they were installed, I would go back. I would usually bring some type of present um, like a gift basket. Um, if I, it, for most people, when I sell them solar, I, I try to become their best friend. And so usually I'll get to know them a little bit. Um, you know, if they're really big into Star Wars, I would get them like a Star Wars t-shirt, you know, it would be something if I could make it specific to them. And then um, I closed, it was, a, I, the year I got the Golden Door, it was 133 installs. And so I, I was looking back before we jumped on the, I jumped on the, the call here. I looked back in about 30% of those. So it was like 45, 46 are were, were from referrals. So if I wouldn't have gotten those referrals, I wouldn't have gotten the golden door. And so that was, that was the other thing is making sure you had three appointments and then going back to every single person, give them some type of gift. Obviously make sure that, that they're having a good experience because if they don't have a good experience, they're not going to give you referrals. And then ask for referrals. I would sit down with them and say, hey, you guys have had a great experience going solar. I'm so happy for you. You're using the sun to be able to power your home. It's pretty amazing. Who, what are five friends, who are five friends or family that you think could benefit from this? They might, they might not want to. That's totally fine. But they might benefit from it. And then I would sit down there and put my pen to paper. And, they, and then most times they're like, oh, I'll, I don't know. I'm like, well, do you have any coworkers? Who do you work with? Like, who's your best friend at work? And then they would tell me, I'm like, does he have solar yet? No, nope. okay, we'll put him down. And then any, who are the family members that are close by? You know, and so sometimes you'd have to get it out of them. But I would just do almost like I'm going for the clothes. It's like, okay, what's the last four of the social? And like, just get down your iPad. And like, that's what I would do for the, for the referrals. Okay, what was the name? All right, what was their phone number? And I'm just pen to paper. And you get five people on every single one of your installs, you better, you're going to close some referrals. And we all know referrals are the, like the cream of the crop because the trust is there. They know someone that's already done it. And so that would be the other one is use the resources that you have from the deals that the hard work, like you're out there knocking doors, you're working hard. And so reap the reward, like you got the, you got the fruit, but there's some more fruit on that tree. So you just got to keep on picking at that tree. So I, I feel like those two things, if you're already at the 60 mark, like, you know, 50 to 60 deals a year, I think just a few small tweaks of not having to work that much more, you can definitely bump up to, you can double that within a year easily, easily by doing those two things. Wow. Some referral hacks, bro. I love to hear yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, guarantee over 50% referral now. That year, you're at 35% referral. My best year was 52.6% referral. Uh, 
So that's a, uh, yeah, dude, I, I think that that's, that's a, a key. Cause, cause I think what, what referrals do is it just shows that you actually attend to your, uh, your client and you're not, you're not in this for a one to two years and get your money and get out and go work at your uh, timeshare job or whatever you got um, or your car sales job or whatnot, or go get into real estate. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that just shows that you care about the client. So you care about the, your integrity, uh, of, you know, you, you, you lead with integrity so that you can get referrals and that's your close. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. Cause it, yeah, everyone that goes solar, what's their biggest concern? Their biggest concern is it's not going to work out like the sales rep saying. Wow. And so if your sales rep is there and you're not, and you're around them all the time, then, you know, you're taken care of, like you're comfortable. You're able to be like, Oh yeah. Mikey, he was the, he was the coolest. He like really liked our dog. I, I would invite him over like, and you this probably probably had this happen. Like we'd invite him over for a barbecue. Like it's just their friends. You know, I, I had a customer just here in Idaho. He had a, a bunch of his buddies bring, he had, he was really into old school cars. And so he had all of his buddies bring their cars and he has this big garage and they were all there. They had a barbecue. I went over, said hi to him. I got a few referrals from that because I was able to go and they're like, and I didn't even bring it up. It, I wasn't there to get referrals, but I came up and he's like, oh yeah, this is Dallin. He's helping me go solar. And they're like, oh, solar, how long have you been doing it? Just talked to him, got a few referrals just, just from doing that. But I was just, I was just there to go. Cause I was, it was a cool, I get to see all these old cars. Yeah. And so it's, um, yeah, if you, if, if you go back to your customer, you're only going to help your chances of getting referrals compared to if you just, they never hear from you again, they're going to be like, Oh, that guy was so fake. You know, I feel like that might happen. It's like, Oh, he was just nice to us to put up the solar. And now we never hear from him again. And that's how I was my first year, my first year, I would sell the deal. And I, I was so nervous to go back to people because I was like, I just don't want them to have a bad experience. And then now I have to deal with the problem because I'm in my head. I was like, problems are bad. Problems are bad. Now I've learned like problems are opportunities. That's how, that's how you grow is by confronting those problems. And, and so, um, yeah, that little bit of a tweak will definitely help. And like you said, yeah, 50%, over 50% referrals. That's like, that's everyone's dream. You're not on the doors nearly as much. You're just talking to people and, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's ideal. Yeah. You, you can just sit not, you can't sit back. It's still a lot of work, but um, you know, that was when, that was when I was running multiple companies at one point. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was, I was able to get tons and tons and I mean, I could have, I could have, I guess you could say that, you know, we, I, I could have sold more deals that those, those few years during that time frame as well. But dude, like, you know, at a certain point, you got to give some of your top closers, you know, I, I would even, I was even giving some of my referrals away. Like I, I technically should have been more I was my <laughs> referrals away. I'm like, I can't run this appointment. I got to run these meetings over here. Like we're recruiting or whatever. So we're doing right. this. So, um, well, dude, I, I really appreciate you down, uh, coming on and, and just sharing your heart and, you know, opening up and giving not just advice, but wisdom, um, from, from an OG in the industry. And, you know, now, now a, a, a company owner, um, a business owner, an investor, you know, a, a, a husband, um, dude, you're, you are, a yeah, bro. You, you are exactly what a lot of the guys that listen to this want, want to be like. And not only that, a lot of the golden door award winners listen to this because we want to know like, Hey, are we the only ones out here that feel like this? So, you know, it's mm -hmm. not just, you know, the guys that are selling 60, 70 deals a month or, or a year rather, but it's the golden door award winners that listen to this as well. And that, that we appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate that. Mike. it's been great. dude. I, everything you're doing for the industry, it's, it's awesome to see someone giving back and, and be able to help people because at the end of the day, I feel like all of us, when we, when uh, it comes to our funeral, this is something I always think of is like, when I am at my funeral, when my funeral is happening, like, what do I want people to say? You know, what do I want people to say at my funeral? And, and I think you're one of those guys where you're, you're going to have a bunch of people saying, do Mikey was one of those people that had so much energy. I, we, we, it fed us. It was able to help us move past a lot of things that I learned a lot from my team. So I think uh, you're, you're on the exact same side, man. That's I awesome. Man. That. Appreciate that. Yeah. That's uh, that legacy thing, man. We can get into that for another 20 minutes probably, but that legacy. <laughs> right. Right. Well, don't, dude, I appreciate your time. Um, thank you so much. And I hope, I hope, uh, you know, your, your year ends up, you guys crush it this year. So appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Uh, so one last thing before we go okay. is 
I always end the show this way is if you were to down and lose everything, the government were to take everything from you and you had to restart and the economy was where the economy's at today, what would you do? Yeah, we're, we're at where we're at now. And you, I think you mentioned this a little bit. If I had zero money, um, first, I would try to make as many connections as I could with people that were doing well. Luckily, the internet is amazing. And so you could connect really fast. And I would find the, the, an opportunity that would match my skill set that I have. And so I was with door to door. I, I could easily start doing door to door again. Um, and so matching that opportunity, it, depending on, you know, if the government took every way, what the economy was like. Um, if some states were better than others, I'd do a little bit of research on, on what state was the best. And to be honest, like the, the immediate response I want to say would be start doing door to door again, would, would just be getting on, getting in on the doors and then using that money. Cause if we are in a downturn economically, then that means things are on sale. Things are going to be cheap. And so I would then turn around, I would, I would invest as much money as much time as I can to make money on the doors to invest it, to, to find places for it. And then making those connections along the way, because what I've noticed is the more people I surround myself with, the more ammo I have on making money, the more avenues I can reach by making money. And so uh, those, would, those would be the big things. Now, if it was completely zero and say the, I couldn't go door to door, we'll just say the market's so bad people don't have the money. I, I, I don't see that happening, but just say we couldn't go door to door. Then I would be getting into the sales side on, on uh, like click funnels. Like that's probably where I'd be heading to as well as, as getting click funnels set up because I know that's the, the, the market for that is really high on people advertising online. And so I think a combo of those two would be, would be big door to door investing and then some type of marketing online because that's where everything's headed. There's, you know, every, if you look at the, the trend on what people do online, it's just up and up and up and up. So pretty soon we're going to be living online. We're going to be, me and you are going to be meeting in a room together and I'm going to be able to feel you and touch you, but we're not going to be in the same place. Like technology is leading to that point. And so I think that I would be getting into that space as well. Awesome. You're talking about like the metaverse? <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. It, it, and I don't, I don't even like it because I don't like the thought of it. But if you just look at trends, it's, it's like, it's, it's almost undeniable. It's like what Jeff Bezos saw when he started Amazon. Is the amount of people buying stuff online just keeps on going up. So now the amount of people meeting online like this, Zoom, it just keeps on going up. So they're going to make better and better technology, make it better and better. And so if you can somehow capitalize on that, then I feel like that would be another, another big. Uh, you win dude that's awesome man i really appreciate you sharing that <laughs> that's no problem dude all right brother well cool man i appreciate it and uh we will uh obviously we'll, we'll chat soon so thank you so much man thank you for your time yeah man if you're ever up in idaho again let me know we'll go we'll up do there. we'll do right, thanks brother all right we'll catch you later cheers